Hello, welcome to Presume Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 54 of SQL Server. One of my YouTube channel subscribers has asked me to make a video on Pivot Operator. So in response to his request, here we are with another SQL Server video on Pivot Operator. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 11 and 48 of this video series where we have discussed about group by and derived tables. So, what's this pivot operator? Pivot is a SQL Server operator that can be used to turn unique values from one column into multiple columns in the output, thereby effectively rotating a table. Let's understand what we mean by this definition with an example. I have this table TBL product sale which has got three columns sales agent, sales country and sales amount. If you look at the data we have three sales agents John, Tom and David selling in three different countries US, UK and India. We also have the sales amount in the same table. Now let's say we want to write a query which produces the total sales amount by sales country and by sales agent. So obviously if we have to achieve this, we can make use of group by. We have spoken about group by in a great detail in part 11 of this video series. So if you're new to group by, I strongly suggest to watch that video first. So in the output, we want sales country, sales agent, and total sales amount. So in the select clause, sales country, sales agent, sum of sales amount as total. So we get all the three columns from TBL product sales table group first by sales country and then by sales agent order by in the same order sales country first and then sales agent so this query would produce this output for us okay now I would say this data can be better presented in a cross tab format now let's understand what we mean by cross tab format so this is the same data which our group by query has output uh, produced now if you look at this David has made a total sales of 960 in India and if you look at the way the same data is presented here this is in a cross tab format so David made a total sales of 960 in India along the same lines Tom made a total sales of 1340 in UK so Tom Tom UK 1340. So it's the same data except that we are presenting this in a cross tab format. And to achieve this, we are making use of the pivot operator. So let's see what's happening here. Now, if you look at this, this India, US, UK, these are actually column values for sales country column. But then we are converting these column values into column names in the output. And if you look at the definition of the pivot operator, pivot is a SQL Server operator that can be used to turn unique values from one column, so unique values from one column, sales country column, into multiple columns in the output. So if you look at this, we are taking the unique values of the sales country column, India, US, UK, and turning them into column names in the output. And that's what pivot operator does and which gives us the effect of rotating a table. Okay, so let's now see how to actually write this pivot operator query. So if you look at this, in the output we want sales agent India, US and UK columns. So select sales agent India, US, UK from TBL product sales. So this is our TBL product sales table. In the TBL product sales table we only have got sales agent column. We don't have India, US and UK. So where are these columns coming from? These columns are the pivoted columns produced by the pivot operator. So if you look at this pivot operator that we have, what this pivot operator doing? It's basically performing a sum aggregate function on the sales amount column because we want the total sales amount. And then in the output we want this India US UK to be pivoted so for and these columns India US UK they are the column values of sales country column so for sales country column in India US UK so these are the values that we want to treat as columns 
So now this pivot operator produces them as columns which are then selected by the select out, outer select query. And we are giving this pivot, whatever this pivot operator produces, an alias pivot table. So it's as simple as that. Select non-pivoted columns from the actual table or it can be a table expression as well. We will talk about table expressions in the next slide. And then the pivoted columns from the pivot table. And within the pivot operator, you specify an aggregate function and the column on which you are performing that aggregate function and for the values, which in turn will be converted into pivoted columns for the outer select query. So it's as simple as that. Let's look at this in action. So this is our product sales table, which has got sales agent, sales country, sales amount. And this is our group by query, performing a group by on sales country and sales agent. So if we execute that, we should get total sales by sales country and sales agent. Next, if we want to present that in a cross tab format, we can make use of pivot operator, which will convert the unique values in the sales country column into column names you know, India, UK, US by making use of this pivot operator. So if you look at the pivot operator, we are performing this aggregate function on the sales amount column for sales country column for these values, India, US, UK, which in turn will be converted into pivoted columns. So let's execute this query and we should get the output that we expect. Okay, now let's look at a slight variation of this. Okay, now I have a table here which is called TBL products sale. So if you look at this table, it's pretty much similar to the table that we have seen just now, sales agent, sales country, sales amount. In addition to these three columns, we have the ID column as well. Okay, and look at the pivot query. Again, this pivot query is the same query. Now if you look at this query, now obviously the pivot operator is giving the sum of sales amount for sales country in India, US, UK these values will be converted into pivoted columns. So India, US, UK from this pivot table, whereas sales agent from TBL product sale. Now apart from sales agent and sales country and sales amount, we also have the ID column. Because of the presence of this ID column in this original table, okay, look at what's going to happen when I execute this query. Look at the output. We didn't expect this output. Now I got 20 rows back. Okay, John, Tom, David, India, US, UK. Now these users are basically repeated. And if you look at the number of rows that we have in TBL product sales, we have 20 rows there. But my pivot query is also giving me 20 rows. And this output is not what I have expected. And that's because of the presence of the ID column in TBL product sales. And you are directly retrieving from TBL product sales. So it's also taking the ID column into consideration. And we have this output that we haven't anticipated. So obviously to correct this, you know, it's pretty simple. All you do is you use a derived table and then select only the columns that you need. So what we are doing here first, look at this. Select only sales agent, sales country, and sales amount from TBL product sale. So obviously, if I execute this query, I get all the rows without the ID column. So it's as if we have only three columns. It's, it's like the same table that we have before. And then you are giving this a name. There's nothing but a derived table, and we have spoken about derived tables as well. So you are giving that a derived table, source table as the name for that derived table. And then the rest of the query is pretty much similar to what we have already seen. So we have pivot, sum of sales amount for sales country for these columns, I mean for these column values, India, US, UK, and you're giving it an alias pivot table. And you're selecting sales agent, not directly from TBL product sales, but from the source table, a derived table. And then India, US, UK, these are coming from the pivot table because those are the pivoted columns. This is the non-pivoted column, which is coming from source table. So now when we execute this query, we get the output that we expect, the same as before. So if you have other columns in the table apart from just the columns that you are operating on, look at this. If you look at the, 
you know this pivot query or this pivot query we are only talking about sales agent sales country and sales amount columns but we also have additional column here id and if you you know don't want those columns to be involved in the output then make use of the derived tables which exclude those columns and then in that derived table we only select the columns that we want to include in the pivot and we get the output that we expect otherwise you end up an output like this which you see here which is not quite what we wanted alright so if you look at you know the pivot query here I mean it seems a little confusing but actually not it's pretty simple if you understand the syntax of the pivot query so from MSDN this is the syntax of the pivot operator so if you look at this select non pivoted column and then comma first pivoted column you can give it an alias if you want we haven't given the alias so first pivoted column second pivoted column and how many ever pivoted columns you have from your select query that produces you know the derived table because you know keep in mind in the actual source table if you have more columns than what you want in your output then uh, the output may not be what you expect so in those circumstances make use of this table expression or derived table so select the query that produces the data and you can give it an alias and then so that acts as the source for your select query from where you will get the non pivoted columns but for pivoted columns you actually get them from the pivot operator okay so a pivot operator will have an aggregate function and that aggregate function obviously performs aggregation on some column in our example it was doing it on sales amount column for column that contains the values that become the column headers in our case sales country column in first pivoted column comma second pivoted column you know you can relate this syntax directly with this query that we have and another thing to keep in mind you can also have optional order by clause on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day